Hello the internet and uh, welcome back on my channel. Um, I purchased this 486 uh, socket 3 motherboard um, as faulty, not working, not booting up. So I'm now going to, you know, see if I can fix it, see if I can make it work again. Now, um, I don't know much about this motherboard. Uh, there's really not much written on it. I don't see uh, like an indication of the brand or anything. There's some um, some indication on the on the, the jumpers, uh, like that's the CPU clock. We got the um, CPU voltage, uh, but I haven't got anything more than that. Um, I haven't done any search to be honest, because I don't know. There's a version 1.1a here, because I don't know really the brand of this thing. At least I, I can't really see anything here. Uh, there's anything here at the back. Not really. Uh, there's a sticker here, but it doesn't really say much on it. It's only serial number. I don't really see anything. Now, thankfully, and I'm not entirely sure about that, um, I found this with the motherboard. Uh, it's claiming to be an M91 motherboard and it comes with um, CPU voltage selection on jumpers and CPU type, uh, basically all the information I need. Uh, the thing is I'm not entirely sure that this is 100% like relevant to the motherboard, but um, well, let's see what happens. So because these motherboards, they um, they can do 3.3 volts, um, 5 volts, and I didn't know about that, uh, the 4 volts as well. It's really important that that is selected before the CPU has been installed. Now, my CPU, which is uh, AMD for 486DX 400 megahertz, I think. I should, I should have a picture of, of it before I put the heatsink on it. Uh, this is a 3.3 volt um, CPU. So um, basically looking at both the motherboard and the instructions here, I can see that for 3.3 volts, I need um, J35, 8 and 9 in that position. Uh, which position is that? It doesn't really say which is which. Well, anyway, right hand side and J11 closed. Now, if I'm looking at the motherboard, that is my uh, J8, J35, and you can see really behind the capacitor J9. Um, so from what I can see, those should be, and you can see here as well, where is it? Uh, CPU VCC 3.3 volts is left hand side. So that would be left hand side and j11 should be here yes and it's closed so that should give me 3.3 volts on the cpu so oops so i would say let's plug a power supply on without a cpu on it and let's take some measurements before frying my beloved um 486 cpu so let me plug my meter on a on a on a ground pin and i would need to check those cpu pins without flipping the motherboard i need one of this i'm sure you can find a better solution for that and that's what i'm going to use and i have here from my last motherboard repair the um socket 3 pin out. So what I'm trying to probe is uh, the second row from the center and it's one, two, three, four, the fifth pin from the outer. So it's basically E2. Um, considering that this, this um, socket, I don't know entirely why, but it has an extra row which will be around an extra row of pins which will basically sits all around the CPU, I guess it's for a different type of CPU. Um, okay, so there's nothing else connected. The power supply is properly connected. Let's set the uh, multimeter for voltage and um, stay reading. So switch it on. And so that would be second row one, two, three, four, five. And I have 3.5, which I 
suppose it's fine. Um, again, it's supposed to be 3.3, but if you look at the specs, it's something between 3 and 3.6, I think. So 3.5 looks fine to me. Uh, and if I'm checking another pin, which is like two further down the same row, yeah, I've got 3.5. Everything looks good. So let's switch off the power supply again and let's install this CPU. As you can see, as you maybe see, there's a row um, of empty pin sockets all around the CPU and that's perfectly fine. Let's lock the CPU in place. I should have a video card here. I say video card. The monitor is connected and um, let me sorry for the mess. Let me show you the monitor as well. The monitor is currently on DGA, which is correct. So let's power it up and see what happens. And I have no activity whatsoever. Now the CPU will take a while to get warm. But let me see if I have. Uh, all right, let's go back to the. There's nothing to see here. I mean, on the monitor. <laughs> so I do have my 4.8 coming in. Let's check, for example, on the BIOS pin, uh, VCC. I think this is VCC. Yeah, got 4.8 coming to the BIOS. Um, let's check if without. Okay. That's not bad. Let's check at the back of the CPU if the voltage is correct. So that should be one, two, three, four, five. No, nope, clearly. Oh, that's the other side. Uh, so that's one, two, oh no, one, two, three, four, five. One point six, and it was two further, same row. One, two. Why is it one point six? Okay, that doesn't make sense. Let's switch it off. Hmm. Now let's get rid of the video card for the time being because again if it's a voltage problem there's no <laughs> no point in, in, in doing troubleshooting with the video card on. Um, the thing is let me check um, usually these motherboards have some sort of voltage obviously you've got five volts and 3.3 volts so five volts is coming straight from the power supply which is you know thinking of modern motherboards with MOSFETs and regulation. It's, it's so weird thinking that the CPU is getting unfiltered, more or less, voltage from directly from the power supply. But I can see that as my other motherboard, um, these jumpers are basically selecting, which are selecting between 3.3 and 5 volts, they're basically selecting between the output of this component here or I guess the power supply straight away. So um, looking at here again, it looks like the 3.3 volts is coming from this component here. Now let me check one thing. So in theory, that's this is a C3420 transistor. And I guess this is being used as, a, um, again, a regulator instead of a regulator. And let me check. Again, everything is off. So let's take the CPU out for a moment. And let me check quickly. I lost my, oh, there it is. Let me check quickly. So if I, I want to check continuity between the transistor and the VCC pin on the CPU. So we are at one, two, three, four, five. 
and that in theory should come from one of the spins so setting the meter for continuity no no yes so that's the emitter of this transistor is powering the cpu um, so now let's go back to where we were so no cpu uh, let's give it power let's see what we read on that transistor so i have um, on the collector oops, let's go back to voltage on collector i have basically the voltage coming from the power supply the base i on the base i have 2.8 volts which i guess is the correct voltage to regulate to three point something and on the emitter i have 3.5 which is what i'm expecting and which is what i'm reading here when the cpu is not in switch it off again let's plug the cpu back in let's power it off again and let's check again so on the collector of this transistor i still have 4.8 volts on the base okay it went up to 4.8 volts weird and the emitter is the voltage i was reading at the back of the board 1.6 so it looks like when the cpu is in something happens and the regulation stops working well the uh, base changes voltage so the base is no i think it was i can't remember the voltage 2.6 volts and it's now a, a 4.8 which for a transistor like this with the same volt but basically there's zero difference between base and collector it should be closed so no voltage it's actually really 1.6 now i'm assuming that this cpu is not shorted it's not faulty or anything last time i tested it worked um, but i guess um, it wouldn't hurt to double check it because that was a long time ago um, so power supply switched off so let's get my well what i think is working motherboard so let's remove the cpu from here and i guess i will need the memory as well and let's switch motherboard quickly for a quick test make sure it boots up so we know the cpu is working so this is another motherboard i have repaired in the past um, let's put some memory here which should be going here let me ground myself first okay cpu uh, should be going this way okay let's lock it up let's turn it around can you all see it yes we don't need the multimeter right now we don't need this right now and let's plug the video card somewhere power is off I repaired this motherboard before I started making these videos. Not, not that I'm doing it massively right now, but so that was off camera. Come on. Hmm. Okay, black in the middle. Let's see the monitor as well. So I've got my CPU should be in the right place. I've got pins all around. I also have, this is a, um, oh, wait a minute. That's a video card. Oh, silly me. I don't need two video cards on this thing, right? <laughs> I forgot about that. That's a um, Visa local bus video card. I just left it there. So we have a video card. We've got power. It's not powered yet. Power supply is in the right place. Um, that was already set up for that CPU. I got the CPU from that motherboard, from this very motherboard. So it should work straight away, to be honest. Let's give it a go and see what happens. I hope it boots up. And it something's happening. Yes, it is booting up. 
sorry for the reflection yeah but anyway again i just wanted to make sure the cpu was working so the cpu is working and uh hence there is something on the other motherboard which is i don't know affecting the affecting the um the voltage to the cpu um i don't think you know without 3.3 ish volts there's really not much you can do but the thing is the um the transistor works with no load and it is, the thing is the base not the base sorry the yes the base the base is changing voltage when the cpu is in so i kind of tend not to blame the transistor because um something's happening on the base it's like there's a um, some sort of a feedback which is sensing something wrong or whatever and it's all oh, right i need to do something um now without schematics it's going to be interesting uh, even though again that should be a fairly simple thing because again the emitter is directly connected to the um to the cpu vcc pins um there's a capacitor here i guess it would be worth taking a look at it just in case it's doing something one thing i'd like to try maybe it, again because <laughs> these motherboards are so easy um could be to just uh, remove the transistor and power the emitter directly from my uh, bench power supply and see what happens um i think that would be a good idea because you know if that still doesn't work you know it's not the transistor and i don't know what it could be it could be this capacitor again even though again i'm concerned about the base changing the voltage uh if it wouldn't it's like okay it must be the transistor or something on the line but because the base is also changing i'm not sure and again i'm 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 not a massive expert when it comes to electronics so so i'm about to remove the transistor here and again so that i can power the whole thing with um with my bench power supply and see if it works well i guess i know i can just focus on on the supply There we go. Now to simplify things, let's just uh, let's just solder something where the um, emitter would be. So hopefully I can just use a, a crocodile. Uh, it's going to be interesting. How do I do that? Okay. You can't really see anything, right? Okay, so this way there's a little pin coming out and that should um, be electrically connected to the VCC on the CPU socket um, potentially going through the capacitor if the reason is moving I don't know okay so this is the plan uh, I have my bench power supply set to 3.5 volt to I don't know whatever current will be required we'll see what happens um currently is disconnected it's just to set it up so i'm going to plug my negative um, i found that the shell of the keyboard connector is connected to ground the positive is going here that's not gonna work okay then we have this this power supply is completely floating so it should be suitable for this kind of test uh, i used that before on the other motherboard because uh, it came with no 3.3 volt support so I basically did exactly the same thing okay um, now I want to check the that the voltage is fine before 
plugging my CPU. There's always a light on this, okay? So let's set this to um, voltage, direct, direct current. This is going to... Hmm. It's going to ground somehow. Okay. And so if I'm powering this, obviously here I'm reading 3.4 and on my VCC pin, which is one, two, three, four, five, I have 3.4, which is following my power supply. So let's set it to, I don't know, 3.4 should be fine to be honest. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's power up the PS2, the main power supply, while monitoring this 3.4. And again, I'm I measure continuity, and I know that's basically zero ohm, so I don't see why that should interfere with the rest of the board. Let's power it up and see what happens. Nothing happens, which is great. Uh, let me just check that I actually have voltage here because I unplugged a socket, a plug, sorry. No, uh, obviously I unplugged the power supply with all the, all the plugs I have. Um, so let's do this. Okay. So let's check this again and make sure that our 3.3 volts are not doing anything funny. One, two, three, four, five. So I go 3.4 and when I power up the power supply, nothing happens. That's good. And I should have five volts here. Yes, okay. So let's switch it off, switch that off. Let's plug the CPU back in. What I'm looking for right now is that the voltage stays at 3.4. Um, if it does, and it still doesn't boot up, it could be jumpers, frequencies, things, you know, we can move to the next stage of, right, are the jumpers set in the right way, blah, blah, blah. Um, so let's plug a video card as well, in case it decides to surprise me and boot up. Monitor. Okay, so monitor is set for VGA, and let me just, I mean, my power supply is telling me the voltage, even though you can't really see that it's, it's the frequency is different. But yeah, let's just uh, let's have the voltage on, on the on the multimeter as well here, just in case. So let's try and do this sort of kind of simultaneously and see what happens. So we have 344. I guess 20 milliamps are not going to be enough. Let's do. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> let's start with 50. If it if it's. Um, limiting this will flash so i know that's not enough which also could mean an issue with somewhere so maybe i don't want to push it to whatever it is let's give it a go and see what happens it is limiting uh there are, there are three volts though okay so let's give it a bit more i don't know 0.8 amps this is going up to two so not much three two one go one, go, go 3.3 and it's not limiting and still not booting up but the voltage is stable 3.4 and yeah but nothing happens so the next it's 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 drawing 0.57 amps and again the voltage is correct and it's not going anywhere, so I guess we do have an issue with our voltage supply. The voltage is kind of, the, 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 the current is kind of changing. So to me, it means something's happening somewhere. It's probably trying to boot up. Probably the, the jumpers are setting correctly. Um, but I guess that's a good starting point. And the thing is, I don't feel Oh, maybe just yeah the cpu is because obviously there's a heat sink now <laughs> um, i think i'm feeling some warmth coming up let me try again i want to check the 
current when it's attempting to go down. Three, two, one, go. Five, seven, okay, it's six, four, five, seven, six, four, okay, it's, who knows? Oh, I haven't got the, <laughs> I haven't got the memory module. Sorry. It's not gonna work without memory, right? Uh, everything is powered off. This is the same one. I'm assuming is the other one sim zero? No, I think it's I don't know. You can see it's actually dirty. Let's give it a little blow. Okay, let's try this again. Three, two, one, go. It's changing something on the current. It's much more happy, but it's still not boosting up. Oh, it is! Woohoo! Look! I didn't see that. Sorry again for the reflection. I don't know if that's uh, better, worse. Well, right! So, that's a very good news. We know that the motherboard works and everything basically it's just an issue with the voltage supply fantastic that's great and hopefully it's easy enough to troubleshoot um that's quite interesting well that was a um again i'm pretty happy with this because again that's telling me it's only a matter of supply supply voltage for the cpu fantastic so let's move on and um and let's see what's wrong with that as a little test, um, I plugged this uh, transistor into my, I think this is an Arduino based um, tester. Uh, let's see what it says. And it says it's an MPN, I'm definitely expecting that. Everything seems fine, let's try again. Battery is below. And again, nothing seems to be wrong. So let's, um, let's check this transistor using the multimeter. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but let's just do it for the sake of doing it. So this is base to emitter, 0.6, base to collector, 0.6, and we have emitter to, oops, emitter to base, and it's nothing. And finally, oops, I'm, I'm checking on the website to be honest. I never remember that. Go collector to base, collector to base, which should read is reads nothing, and collector to emitter. Hmm. Collector to emitter. Again, um, I'm checking on a random website, and according to that website, it says a good NPN or PMP transistor will read overload or L, over limit, sorry. Uh, swap the leads. Once again, a good NPN or PMP transistor should read over limit. And this is reading 1.9. And this is definitely collector and emitter. Yes, hmm, interesting. I've received the replacement transistor. It's not the same model of the one I have removed. The one I removed is a C3420. And the one I've got is an MJE200. Uh, apparently this is a suitable replacement according to an um, internet forum. So I guess, um, well, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. And I guess the first thing I want to do is to, uh, just out of curiosity, to be honest, I want to, compare the two transistors. Uh, the two transistors have same um, emitter 
collector base placement. So it's pin number one emitter, pin number two collector, pin number three base. So again, let's compare. So let's start with base to emitter. So again, on the other one, base to emitter, I'm reading 0 0.6 and on the new one, I'm reading 0 0.6, uh, which is good. Base to collector, I'm reading 0 0.6 and on the replacement, I'm reading 0 0.6. Um, emitter to base, emitter to base. So basically swap in the lead. I think I have oil on this and I have oil on this and then collect to base OL and collector to base OL. Now then we have collector to emitter, which was the one that was um, concerning me. So collector to emitter on the one I'm replacing, I'm reading. That's interesting. I was definitely reading something here. I was reading one, reading 1 1.9, 1.6. Unless it was, no. It was collector to emitter or emitter to collector. And it was definitely reading something. I think I have it on video. <laughs> wow, okay. It doesn't doesn't do that anymore. That's interesting. I need to go back to my videos to be honest and see. Okay. Okay, well, um I don't know. So let's check the new one and obviously I'm reading nothing here and nothing here. Uh, okay. That's quite interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Well, all I can say is let's replace it and see what happens. So as I was taught by uh, an electronic engineer friend of mine uh, it's always when installing something like in this case which is on a, on a heat sink and it's mechanically connected to a PCB it's always a good idea to do the mechanical um, part before doing the soldering so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna place my heat sink uh, let me see if I can guess where I can bend those pins. Well, I guess I can use the other one, the old one, as a reference and, and bend the pins at the same, the same way. So these two transistors obviously have the same case and I'll, I'll try and bend the new one pins in the same way, in the same point mainly. that may work so what I'm going to do here I'm going to slide the transistor in slide the heatsink in okay it's roughly there it's not 100% but it's okay it's not 100% aligned but it's okay and finally I will just mechanically attach the transistor before doing the soldering because once you've done the soldering you have a you have mechanically fixed the transistor in, in a position which may not the, the nat natural position for the transistor as I said it's not exactly 100% aligned no it works works fine so I've got my screw here bolt in the back oops oh thankfully it didn't go didn't fall on the floor okay 
I may put some uh, thermal compound later on but to be honest I'm not even 100% sure this is going to work so for now it's okay so now that the transistor is oh, now the transistor is mechanically attached to the board now I can solder it because otherwise the risk is that you, you do the soldering and um, and what you're doing you are when you're mechanically attaching the transistor you're stressing the solder joints and eventually they may fail that's the only reason for doing that this way and not the other way around That's good. Let's give it a clean, even though again I'll uh, I'll do a, probably a proper clean. You know, whenever if it works, I'll, I'll finalize it. And, uh, probably put a little bit of thermal compound. Okay. Now, clearly, I don't want to test this with my CPU in place because uh, I really have no clue what's going to happen. So I'll remove the CPU. I will plug my uh, supply. Again, that transistor is really literally only affecting the CPU voltage. So you know, let's remove the memory just in case. But I don't see. Well, let's not say anything about that. I was about to say that I don't see what could go wrong. Uh, let's not say that, but I said it. So, um, well, it's the wrong color, but let's plug my multimeter here. And um, again, we know that the, the CPU voltage is directly going it's directly connected to the emitter of this transistor. So let's connect to the emitter and see what it reads. Three, two, one, go. Well, we've got 3.5. looks pretty good to me. And just to be on the safe side, let's double check that that's actually the voltage that we have in the in the VCC pin of the processor. I can't find one on oh there's my crocodile. So let's let's restore the proper color for my OCD. Okay. Red is here my pin so again that's supposed to be second row one two three four five i think there you go 3.5 volts okay so power off um the next step is going to be with the cpu and monitor closely the voltage to see what happens so see the power supply is off CPU goes back in carefully. There we go. So again, I got the multimeter set to voltage. I'm connected to the emitter. And again, remember the last time we tried is um, somehow the voltage was dropping to 1.6 volts. So hopefully this is fixing the problem. Um, I don't know. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that looks promising. I've got 3.5 volts and holding. 
That's very good. Power off, and I would say let's plug a video card and see what happens. Okay, I've got uh, one of my video cards connected. Uh, this motherboard is quite advanced, I would say. Um, it comes with an integrated um, disk controller. So I've got my floppy control, my hard drive uh, connected, uh, my hard drive connected. I've got a keyboard, I've got memory, CPU is back in. And um, yeah, well, let's, uh, uh, let's say, let's see what happens. Monitor is plugged in. Um, let me check the voltage while it's booting, if it's booting up. So I'm checking again the emitter reduction system, which is the VCC of the core of the CPU. And three, two, one, go. 3.5 and holding. It says no VGA cable, which means it's probably, <laughs> I have unplugged this on the other side. Okay, let's switch it off for a sec. And let me check on the monitor end. No, that's weird. Oh, okay. Sorry, it wasn't fully in. Switch this off. That's better. Let's try this again. Three, two, one, go. And again, three point five. Got something coming up. And it's putting up. Wow, look at that. Um, voltage is still reading. Let's try not short everything here. 3.5 volts, as you can see. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, there you go. Okay. Uh, system options no said I guess the battery is dead actually let's let's swap the battery well let's check the battery and and see you know if I can fix this now <laughs> so at least whatever I'm doing with that bias is staying uh, it's a CR thankfully it's a <clears throat> coin cell battery so we don't have to mess about it too much that's the ooh, okay it's kind of loose inside the holder uh, Yeah, okay, fair enough. Let's check the voltage first. And this battery is reading nothing. <laughs> okay, which is very expectable to be honest. Again, it's a, I don't know, 30 years old motherboard. Now I've got a bunch of replacements here. So I've got one here, which is reading 3.3. Plug it back in again. This this top contact thing is kind of loose. Let's see what happens. Okay, now it's better now. I pushed it down a little, and it seems okay. Okay, then uh, let's power this back up again and see and see what happens. Three, two, one, go. I managed to get rid of the reflection of the monitor. <laughs> yes, it got something. It should still complain about bias and stuff. Uh, okay, F1 to resume. Oh, that's a fancy, fancy bias. Let me see if I can put it back to uh, 4x3. That will feel let's do a one to one. Yeah, no, I don't want one to one aspect. Anyways, sorry for the black lines. Again, this is a monitor I used to have at home uh, for my desktop, and I kind of upgraded the monitor and I yeah, downgraded this monitor here. Um, date time. So today is, oh, I can't remember, but it's definitely not the 1980s. 2021 it is July oh I can't remember but it's Tuesday today so it's not the 6th uh, it's the 13th 
I think it's the 20th, I can't remember. <laughs> Oops. Okay, random time. Oh, no. 11. Uh, floppy A, we have a 1.44. Floppy B, not installed. Master disk, it says not installed. And I see there is an auto IDE here. There we go. He has detected the primary disk here of it says eight eight megabyte it could be i think i may have formatted this drive this disk as eight megabytes so it's being recognized by all my strange 386 486 motherboards that's set parameter yes uh color set oh look at that <laughs> oh my gosh this is so unnecessary <laughs> so much unnecessary anyways um password default and so we have an advanced well it's the usual the usual stuff uh, that's i like to he hear the floppy drive sitting at both i put see a okay well that should work we've got cache enabled external cache enabled uh fair enough let's save changes and exit is seeking hard drive is being recognized 4x60x4 100 megahertz so apparently i got sorry it's too fast <laughs> i got the 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 um jumpers right they were completely like completely wrong i don't know whoever is selling those boards um they should probably look at their own documentations a bit more before saying the board is faulty Oh, I see now it's looking to the ESS sound card that I was testing. And I, it looks like it's got... Oh, no, no. Okay, managed to go through that. Perfect. Look, it's working. And, yeah. I haven't got anything connected. Um, sound cards, um, PC speaker. But this seems to be working and again let's uh let's double check the voltage again again very carefully because i don't want to break anything here i don't want to short anything it's 3.5 and this thing is getting lukewarm it's not really yeah it's like skin temperature to be honest i mean i can still put some thermal compound but i i feel it's not really going to be a big deal okay and yeah it's working There we go. I'm still not sure why I have those lines, vertical lines. Uh, it could be this video card. So I think I've seen them before. I don't know how much you can see them. Probably not much. Um, you see that on some bright, like here, you can see I've got some vertical lines. I don't really know, but I'm kind of confident I've seen them on different systems uh, it could be the video card it could be the vga interface i'll uh, be honest i'm not massively concerned it works um again the problem was definitely not <laughs> the video or anything it was is the voltage cpu voltage and we sorted that one well, I did. so so this is it motherboard seems to be fully working um let me just uh, let me just reset the mother the reset the system. I may have managed to pause the screen in here. 
I uh, just wanted to have a look here. So it's reading an AMD 4860X4 SE, I think it's an S model, SE, uh, maybe the same thing. Um, the BIOS is 10th of October 1994. I don't know, but there may be an upgrade for that one. Uh, it's reading eight megabytes of RAM, serial ports and parallel ports. That's interesting. We've got, oh wow, the motherboard comes with parallel and serial. Wow, this is this is my new fancy 486 motherboard. The other one is not as good. And it also has PCI slots, by the way. And you can see the hard drive correctly. 128 kilobytes of cache, which I believe it's what it's on, on this board. I haven't checked, but it should be. And 100 megahertz CPU clock. So yeah, everything's working.